And we are live, Corey. Yay. Yay. Hello, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. Welcome tonight. I'm so excited to have Corey back. A few weeks ago, she was here and did Tahiti. Um, but tonight, she's here to talk about truly a life-changing and, and life-saving, I think, trip. Um, and this is going to go pretty deep tonight. And it's okay because, yes, this is, you know, I shared in the status earlier that the purpose of this was to educate and entertain about travel. But I think that it's also important to use this platform to educate on more serious topics. And it, it does tie travel in. Um, you know, I, I believe in self-care and I believe that travel can be one of the biggest forms of self-care. Um, so before we really get started, I am going to ask everybody that's coming in right now, please, please, please go in there and share the link to this video on your page. Encourage everyone to come and watch. There's no gift. I mean, there's no, this is not for a drawing. This is not, this is absolutely because we have no idea what anyone is struggling with in life. And this right here, this video and Corey's story could go a long ways in helping somebody that's on the edge tonight. So just please go and share this video. Um, welcome, Corey. Like I said, I'm gonna, uh, but I do, instead of doing my traditional opening tonight, I'm going to share my screen real quick because I've got some statistics that I want to share with everyone. Um, so let's go ahead and get started while everyone is sharing this video. Um, Corey, can you see my screen? I can. Okay, awesome. Um, so tonight, we're going to actually be talking about um, Corey's trip to Niagara Falls and how it helped her during a very dark time in her life. Um, but we also want to make everyone aware that this is actually Suicide Prevention Month. And I wanted to share some statistics on suicide with you all. Um, you know, close to 800,000 people die due to suicide each year, and that translates to one person every 40 seconds that successfully completes suicide. So just during this time that we're doing a live tonight, think about it, one every 40 seconds, guys, that's a huge number. And for everyone that successfully completes suicide, there's probably more than 20 people that are attempting at that very time. Suicide's the second leading cause of death among 15 to 29 year olds globally. And it's the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. And here's the big one, 90% of those who completed suicide had a diagnosable mental health condition at the time of their death. Those numbers, I mean, you know, and Corey, you know, we talked about before, you're a therapist. Yes, ma'am. So this is something that you work with and I'm coming from a mental health field. I work yep. with it every day. Absolutely. So what do you think? Let me, while I share, I'm gonna share the number, but you know, I'm gonna go ahead and let you get started. I'm gonna turn it over to you, but I did want to share this number and I want everyone that is on here um, to make a note of this number, if not for you, for it, in case you ever need it, take a screenshot of it and share it. Um, people do not always know there's help out there. Corey, would you agree with that? Absolutely. And even the ones that do know that there's help, they don't always reach out. Um, obviously, not everybody who has, you know, a mental health issue or even just something going on in their life where there is some suicidal ideation or thoughts, they they don't always reach out for help. And more than that, they don't always reach out for help to the people that are in their lives. So this number is actually um, really good because it's a faceless thing for somebody to reach out for 
without having to include family members or put a burden on the people in their lives. Right. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and where do you want to start? Do you want to start with just the first picture or a little history and behind it or the video? What's well, the so video? let's let's start with trigger warning. <laughs> <laughs> trigger warning. Trigger yes, warning. Obviously, we're talking about suicide. Um, so you know it's it's gonna get a little dark and twisty, but there's a happy ending because here I am. So. <laughs> yes, and we're thankful um, for that. I'm very thankful. Yeah, a lot of people are. Um, so um, yeah, definitely trigger warning. But um, I guess I I just want to start with um, I think that it's pretty safe to say just about everybody that I know um, has struggled with some form of suicidality, whether it's a thought, whether it's a plan with some means, or whether it's actual action um and you know failed attempts or unfortunately i've had a few people in my world who have completed um so this really is a big deal um because even on you know even for all of us just kind of hanging out here um we've all been through our things whatever those are and that thought of suicide you know tends to swirl for many of us even if we get rid of it immediately and um so yeah, this is this is uh, kind of my dark spot. So yeah, if you could play that video, and if we, I'll just let it go for like the ten seconds that it is, and then I'll talk about it. Okay. So this moment right here, I'm already gonna cry. You love this this moment right here um i wanted to start with this because this was the moment um i went to niagara falls um canada side um because i was planning on not coming back and um i didn't really have it planned out how or where or what or you know i i wasn't sure of the logistics yet um but i wasn't going to come back and um the people that were in my life that were very close to me, they knew, um, and they knew that my plans. And my um, my best friends had talked amongst themselves, and and you know, uh, kind of did this behind the scenes stuff uh, to try to join me in Niagara Falls, because they figured if they were there, um, it would make a difference. But they also knew me really well, and they knew that even if they were there. If I was going to go through with it, I was going to go through with it, even if they were with me. And that if I wasn't, that I would need to go through that on my own. And they were right. Um, they all expressed their support, their encouragement, their love, their all the things. I mean, my friends did all the things right. Um, but I came here with that intention. And I stood, this is underneath um, the waterfall. And we'll, we'll see what that looks like in, you know, in a little bit. But there's a tunnel that goes underneath Niagara Falls, underneath the waterfall. And um, I took the tour just thinking, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, I guess I'll do that. And I stood in this spot for about 20 minutes. And you can hear the power. Um, you can see the power. Um, later, there are some facts and it'll tell you like how many gallons are coming over like per half second or something. And so I stood in that spot with nobody really around me. Everybody was kind of leaving me alone. It was November. And so it was cold. Nobody was really there. Um, and uh, I went through every pro and con that was in my head. And it was 20 minutes of fighting with myself of do I step forward or do I step back? And just listening to that power and knowing that if I just took that step forward, that'd be the end of that. Um, but if I took that step back, what would life be like in a year? Um, and there wasn't even anybody in my head that kind of went, oh, I need to stay here for my kid or, you know, all those things that people tell you, don't do it, you know, um, those 
those things, I had already taken care of that. You know, she was financially good. I got a rental car so that I didn't even need to worry about getting the car back home. Like enterprise would come pick it up. Um, I had everything taken care of. And um, so the only thing that was going to stop me was me. And um, it was, it was probably the hardest 20 minutes um, that I think I've ever been through. So. Yeah. Now, I, whenever, you know, you sent me this video, these videos, you sent them, you know, the night that you did the um, Tahiti presentation, but I actually sat down yesterday and was watching the videos and you mentioned the power, you yeah. know, and that's one thing when I watched this video, I could hear that. Yes. Um, it is amazing. And, and that was kind of, that was overwhelming too. Like that sound, like, and you're in a tunnel. You know, so like it echoes, it's all concrete. It's just right. the echoing sound of just rushing water that is so much more powerful than me, you know? Right. Well, and I know, you know, Corey, I remember when you posted on Facebook that you were taking this trip. Yeah. And, you know, I thought at the time, because, you know, I knew that you had been going through a rough time. Yeah. Um, you know, but I didn't know the extent of everything that internally you were dealing with, yeah, you know, and I didn't thing. realize what this trip was, right. but I actually went back and I found that status that you had posted when I looked at it today. Uh -huh. And I'm, you know, I'm sitting here thinking when you read what you had posted, unless somebody really, really knew you, I mean, really knew you. From that post, I probably would never have dreamed if you would have, have done what in your mind you wanted to accomplish right. there at that time. I would have been like, oh my gosh, but her, you know, her post about going was so much about, you know, a new start and things like that. But I think that's one thing that we really want to let people know too. Yeah is, you know, you're not necessarily going to come out there and say, hey, I'm going to Niagara Falls to do this, 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 and this, Yeah, you know, so it's really important for people that really know someone, yeah. um, you know, to, to kind of be mindful of it, and even, you know, looking back now, I'm like, oh gosh, I realize now, but that's hindsight, you know? Sure, well, um, and you know, the, the thing is, like, when, you know, people who have family members or, you know, close friends that actually complete um, a suicidal act, um, you know, in their head, they're stuck with, you know, I, sh I should have known, or I, I, why didn't I see the signs or, but bottom line is, if somebody doesn't want you to know, if somebody doesn't want you to see the signs, you're not gonna. And good Lord, Facebook is never going to be able to give you all the answers because, you know, you, you present the way that you want to present. Um, and for something like this, it was the same thing. Um, so I think it's important to, you know, kind of realizing that you aren't always going to know and that oh. that's okay too. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, so I did hear the power of this and, and, you know, I could only imagine standing underneath all of this. Yeah. You know? I mean, shoo. There was all a right. moment, there was a moment where I was standing there and I was crying so hard, like snot down my face and, you know, the kind of like where you can't breathe. And there was this guy who like walked up and stood next to me, like, you know, just to see what I was looking at too, and saw that I had, was losing my shit. And he just kind of looked at me and I didn't turn my head at all. I just kind of ignored that he was even there. And he just turned and walked away. <laughs> like he just went about yeah. his own business. And, you know, even that, like, I wasn't looking for a stranger to reach out, believe me. Um, I actually, there was a moment in my head that I thought, okay, that's really funny. And then I thought, oh my God, okay, so if I jump and this ends up on the news tomorrow, this poor guy's going to be like, oh my God, I stood next to her. <laughs> Oh gosh, the it is funny. The, yeah, the, the things that me was like, oh god, I can't do that to him. <laughs> yeah, the things. That, thank God for the stranger that you know Corey didn't want to have on the news the next day. You know. Oh, oh yeah. So, all right, yeah. you ready to go to this next one? I'm ready. So, right. um, 
what happened was um, I was going through a um, surprise major breakup um, and at, you know, 47 years old, I sound like I'm 16 and I realize that, um, but it was a little deeper than that. Um, so uh, I, I was lost. I just, I didn't know what to do. And it had been um, a month. And um, so I was already off for Thanksgiving. My Thanksgiving plans obviously had been trashed. Um, the day after Thanksgiving was a concert that we were all supposed to go to. And of course I wasn't going to that. So I wasn't going to sit home. And so I was like, what can I do? Where can I go? And I grabbed my passport and I said, I'm out of here. Um, and I had reached out. I'm part of a group on Facebook called Girls Love Travel. And um, it's basically a bunch of, of girls that do a lot of solo travel. And so I had put on there like, hey, guys, I'm, I'm going to do this, you know, this this travel for myself. I'm going to go. This is my story. This is what's going on. And there were, if I remember correctly, it was like 3000 girls who wrote back to me and were just like, you need this trip. You can do this. You know, you're going to get through this just super, super just building me up. And so I got a rental car again with kind of the idea of leaving it behind if I needed to um, and drove to Canada. So um, this is our uh, this is our toll point where we currently aren't allowed to go because Canadians aren't about to let any U.S. citizens in. <laughs> now, Corey, was it hard to go to Canada from the United States? I know nope. there's some requirements, right? Is it just passport? Passport. passport. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, it was about a 10 hour drive. Um, I went straight through and, um, when, when we got to the, to the checkpoint, um, they asked for passport, you know, uh, driver's license, asked the reason why I was there, asked if I was alone, why I was alone. That was a little weird. Um, <laughs> how much money I had on me. Um, I, I kind of felt like I was getting mugged, but, <laughs> <laughs> And and Canadians are supposed to be super sweet, but this particular guy did not <laughs> like his job very much. But well, no, it was, was super easy. Maybe he was trying to get a date, Corey. I mean, how much money do you have? Why are you alone? <laughs> yeah. you know? Buddy, it's not going to happen with me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what you have to go into traveling from the United States into Canada. Correct. Yeah, okay. that's that's the border. All right. So for anybody that may be thinking about the car trip there, here you go. And you said it was a 10 hour drive and you're in Tennessee, correct? Yep. So, yeah, and it was a super easy drive. I mean, it was a straight shot. No worries. So okay. awesome. All right. So passport only required guys. Um, yep. And I'm assuming the passport card would work here because it is land or water travel that that covers. So there you go. So, there you go. All right. <laughs> so when I went, I decided because when I travel, I travel like I have money that I don't have. And <laughs> for this particular yeah, for this particular trip, I traveled like I had money because it didn't matter if I had it or not. And so I got um this ginormous, really cool sweet to treat myself with. And so that red thing is one of those giant heart hot tubs. Um, and then of course it had the fireplace and it had the TV, it had this huge shower. I mean, it had this lounge chair and it had a sofa off to the side and huge wind. I mean, it was, it was pretty amazing. Honestly. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. and I swear I probably took three hot tub baths a day and it was lovely. Yeah. <laughs> um, Oh the, gosh. The prices in Canada are so great too. At least they were. I'm sure it changes, but um it was about half um of everything, like everything that I had budgeted in my head was about half the cost. Um and so actually a room like this, um, it was in my head it was two hundred dollars, but it was only a hundred bucks a night. Um, oh wow. And yeah, and as I say, I mean it had all the things, like all the things. So yeah. Now um I, I want to go back and mention, and I don't know if you mentioned this trip was just this past year. Correct. Okay. So um 
Wow. Yeah, I can definitely, I know Corey likes to travel in style. So. <laughs> But sounds like you can travel in style affordably in Canada. You can go to Canada. It's nice and cheap. There you go. <laughs> yep. If nobody's thought about Canada, here you go. Here you go. All right. Let's see what we got next. So when I went, um, the other thing that I did for myself was, so this was a four-day trip. And um, I had decided to do a bunch of just, um, if I'm going on I had never been to Niagara Falls. It was on my bucket list. Might as well knock something off that. And um, so I, I wanted to do certain things. I, I wanted to go on in my head. I wanted to go on the Maid of the Mist. Um, Maid of the Mist is on the U.S. side for everybody. Um, Hornblower is on the Canadian side. So if you want to go on the Maid of the Mist that you see in, you know, all the movies and what have you, go on the go on the U.S. side. You're going to have to be in New York for that. Um, so. I booked these a, are boats right yeah, those are the big boats that like okay. go in and up against the waterfalls themselves um so that you're like in it yeah okay. um so i booked that um and then i booked the scene behind or going behind the tour and then i booked a zip line tour for myself um so the very first day we had this tour guide who you know we we met him at a certain spot and he kind of drove us around and told us a bunch of stuff about Niagara Falls and about Canada. And um, as he was driving, we passed by this Buddhist temple. And, um, you know, in my head, I've got, you know, all of these suicidal thoughts and um, all this hopelessness and this anger and this dread and this despair and all of, you know, all of these horrible things. And we passed by a Buddhist temple. And I have always wanted to go to India to go into a Buddhist temple. And so I was like, oh, you asshole, here you are showing me a temple. So I guess I have to go. <laughs> and um, so I kind of tucked it away in my head, like, okay, I can get back here and I'll do that, you know, tomorrow. And um, so I went back and I went to this temple. It was absolutely gorgeous. It was the temple of, I want to say, 10,000 Buddhists or 10,000 Buddhas. Um, so this was the front entrance and anybody could go in. So go ahead and flip it. Oh, flip it. Hang on. I gotcha. These were just some of the things that were then inside. Like you could walk around their grounds um, and they had, you know, this was um, this huge bell. Um, and then... Um, that was i mean this they had these these um like the pagodas everywhere um the grounds were huge and um like huge enough i'm lazy so i like drove around the parking lot instead of walking um <laughs> who wants to get exercise in before they die nobody um <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah uh, these are the two signs. so oh, um that. no you're good go ahead and flip it okay so this was um the entrance to where you where the public could go in and because the, the big temple was closed um they only have it open like the summer months and this was november so it wasn't open and so i went in just to kind of say you know hey okay i guess i have this calling i've got to go in and so i went in and you know here's this huge you know um golden laid temple and I I didn't know what I was doing I, I didn't know I'd never been inside I I know you know I I try in my head I subscribe a lot to Buddhist principles um but I don't know Buddhist practice of religion and so you walk in and I see shoes and I'm like okay kick off my shoes so I do that and I start walking around well then I realize that nobody else is walking around barefoot so I go back sure enough they have cute little like flippy floppies that you can you know take out of the package and wear so that you're not walking around their temple barefoot good to know so you know first faux pas but um I'm walking around and I'm just kind of looking and I sit down in um this little area that was surrounded by these huge statues and and again I just I sat down and I just started bawling um I'm really surprised nobody came up to me because I was crying so hard that it was echoing in the halls yeah. um, and I just sat there kind of cross-legged for a while just crying and not even really thinking anything just 
finally kind of letting out everything that, you know, was, was so overwhelming. And, um, when I finally stopped, it was like, somebody just told me to suck it up and <laughs> meant it. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I did, like, I was just like, <sighs> okay, well, uh, okay. I guess I'm done. Um, I guess, I guess I'm going to go. And so I, I got up and as I was walking out, there was this little like booth and it had these little hangy things that, you know, you can hook to your rear view mirror or mine is still currently hooked to my phone. And so there was a, a monk that was sitting there and um, I said, what are these? And, uh, he said, oh, we make those and they help to support the, re support the restoration, um, of our temple. And, and he said, they're for protection. And, um, I said, you know, protection from, and he says, from whatever you need. And he says, you oh, know, wow. I suggest you keep it close to you. He says, we make these and we bless each one. And I said, I would really appreciate it if you pick one out for me. And he said, absolutely. And so he picked one out, he handed it to me, he grabbed both of my hands and he said, um, you know, you, you will be okay and this will protect you. And so I was like, oh, thank you uh -oh. so much. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I pull it together, you know, and, and I leave and I sit in the car for a minute and I gather myself and I was headed to the next event that I, that was a time scheduled thing. You know, one of the things I had signed up for and I have my cool little thing on my phone. Now it's hooked on there. And I start driving to where I was supposed to go and I find the perfect parking spot. And so I was like, <sighs> look, it's it already worked. happening. I it got the worked. perfect parking spot. And so I park and I get out and I walk to the curb and I trip and I fall on my phone. Oh, no. And when oh, I trip, no. my phone laid out in front of me. And here's this cute little string thing that's straight out. And I went, are you kidding me? <laughs> Screamed it. This couple walks past me and they just kind of keep walking and I'm on my knees. I've ripped my pants. My knee is bloody. My hands are scratched and I'm so mad <laughs> at this point. Oh no. Oh no. Um, I was really thinking this was going to be a bright and positive. Yes, the, the parking spot was there and the, the clouds parted and the rainbow no. showed up. And so did I. Not so much. Uh, you know, it's one of those where, you know, when you're down, things life likes to life has a sense of humor. Murphy's kind of a jerk. So um, but I got up. And later on, um, I had a co-leader who actually said to me, um, you know, I, th I think it's actually kind of cool. He said, you got exactly what you needed. And I was like, how the hell was that what I needed? And he said, you know, no matter how hard life knocks you down, no matter how, you know, scratched up you get, no matter how hurt, no matter how bruised, you pick yourself back up and you start over. And that's what I did. Um, I got up and I started over and, you know, kept walking. So who Do knows? you know how many people I think would have just been like, I, I, I'm done. I mean, I'm, I'm literally, this is the sign that I've been waiting for, you know? And, yeah. and so maybe that monk there knew exactly what you needed. And that right. would be nothing but the kind words not necessarily what they had created for protection right. but right. you know just those words of telling you you're going to be okay sure. you might not feel okay right now but you're going to be okay yeah you know and um, and and it's you know you hear that and when you're in that state of mind you hear it and you go you don't know like no i'm not um, and then when you fall flat on your face and you, you know, rip your knee open, you're like, now I really know I'm not going to be okay. Right. But you're too pissed. I was too pissed to care at that point. Right. But you know, at the end of the day, Corey, you did pick yourself up I did. and you did, you know, go forward. And, you know, that's just, that's one thing I think that we have to admire because when you're in that state of mind, you know, you're a fighter. I mean, I don't know any other way to say it. You're a fighter. Um, you know, I just have I, to cry a lot first. <laughs> but you know, I mean, you 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 did get back up, and I'm glad you got back up. 
I really am. Um, you know, and and I'm just going to throw just a little bit of, of personal here, too. You know, and, and that is a lot of people on my friends list know, and a lot of people don't. You know, I, I personally you know, have, have kind of dealt with the suicidal ideation, you know, with, through my son, you know, through my youngest, um, who's actually attempted one time. Um, we had just about an accidental overdose not too long ago. Um, and, you know, also as, as I was growing up, you know, and, and when I was in school and, and all of that, I had some suicidal ideation of my own. Um, so I think it's something that we all, even if we're not personally, we probably do know somebody that has been there. So um, anyway, so I gave you your next one here. Yeah. So um, the first night I went out and, um, you know, I, I wanted to, I wanted to view the sights. And so I went right by the water, um, right by Horseshoe Falls. And um, it was Thanksgiving. And so um, yay for Canada for putting on a, a Thanksgiving, a U.S. Thanksgiving fireworks show. Yay. And so there was a fireworks show that night. And so there was all, everything was lit for Christmas. And, you know, here were all of these things, which honestly in the moment made it worse because, you know, I did not want to celebrate. Um, but, um, but it was beautiful and there was actually some snow on the ground. It was cold as crap. Um, but it was so, so pretty. And so this actually, um, is a picture of, um, one of the highest points, um, in Niagara Falls. And that is a restaurant at the very top. Um, there's one in Seattle, like it too. Um, the whole top spins takes an hour to spin all the way around. And um, it just gives you a view of all of Ni the, the city of Niagara Falls and of course of the falls themselves. Um, and I did eat up there by myself and had a really good steak and a $5 glass of Coke. Um, <laughs> $5 glass of Coke? <laughs> the only thing that was super expensive was my $5 glass of Coke. <laughs> oh gosh, well, how much was the steak? Normal, it was like 12 bucks, like. <laughs> So the but, steak was not, I mean, in, in, re, uh, what yeah. is it, in ratio, the steak was yeah. probably a better deal than the Coke. Oh, by far. Yeah, I was a little perturbed yeah. with that. <laughs> but yeah, was, so if you go, um, eat at the Sky Tower. Um, it is a, it's a great restaurant. It's really a cool view. Um, it's an amazing view. Oh, whoops. Um, I messed where up. Are you where are you going? Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. 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 So yeah. So eat at the Sky Tower. Awesome. That kind of reminds me of that thing in Pigeon Forge or in Gatlinburg that you go up in, like the, you know, the little needle thing that you got. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I don't try to picture what's up there, though. I, I remember seeing it, but I, for some reason, I know I haven't been on it or in it. So, yeah. Okay. Money. I always have to show the money. So yeah, of course I, I also went gambling um, because there's a, there was a giant casino and so why not? And so I went gambling and I blew um, a little bit there. Um, they had, um, I love table games and they had war. Remember playing war in elementary school? Like I have a 10 and okay. you have a queen, you win. Oh, yeah. Wow. Do you know how much money I lost playing war because oh. it pissed me off? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Well, uh, no. How much did you lose? Are you even going to tell us? Well, so here's the thing. Part of the gambling thing, even that was like, you know, if I win, then that's a sign. Yeah. I, I lost 150 bucks in about 15 minutes. Wow. <laughs> On war, playing war. Well, I mean, I lost about 80 bucks playing war. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So at that point, did you take that as a sign of? Mm. oh no yeah. not until I lost all of it uh, as soon as I lost everything that I had put aside I had actually set aside x amount to gamble with and so when I uh -huh. when I was done with that I was like okay well <laughs> there you go <laughs> I lost all there's that you, there's your there's side, side. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yep all right so that's their money it's got the yeah. leaves on it yeah all right prettier than ours yeah. um 
So one of the things when you do solo travel, you have a few choices. Um, you either take pictures of all the things, you take solo um, selfies, or you go up to strangers and you say, hey, would you please take a picture of me? And I did a lot of that. Um, you know, I, I tend to be very shy, so it's hard for me sometimes to ask for that. Yeah. But, um, but so there was this, uh, you know, just stand in a, in a barrel. And for me, it was very ironic. I saw it and I was like, oh, you know, let's take a picture of me going over the falls. Oh, no, Corey. <laughs> oh. Look, it is but what I'm it is. Yeah, but I'm sitting here looking and saying, look, she's this is a smile on her face. Maybe this was at a point that she was not thinking about it. But at this point, you were still thinking about it. Absolutely. Um, okay. yeah, even in even in my worst states, I I still have a really sick sense of humor. So yeah, yeah I literally I saw that I saw that there because there were about three different places where you could take your picture where it said Niagara Falls, Canada. And um so I saw that one and, and yeah, it was just like, oh, what this is great irony. I'll go ahead and I'll post it before. <laughs> oh gosh. Now, Corey, was this your first ever solo trip? It was my first um solo trip from beginning to end. So okay. I've done a lot where like I will, you know, drive 10 hours, 13 hours, and then I'll meet up with friends or I'll, you know, whatever. And then I have people with me. But this was the first time where right. I did the entire trip entirely by myself. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take this to the travel side of this is, you know, there are a lot of solo travelers. Corey yeah. mentioned a, a Facebook group that primarily, yeah. um, you know, does solo travel. Yeah. Um. But there are a lot of people that that do solo trips. So, you know, Corey may have had a, a different reason for behind hers, but that is definitely something that, you know, is an option. Don't think you always have to have somebody with you to travel. You know, you it really, really don't. I mean, it was awesome. Um, and I, yeah. I truly do believe, I mean, I, I really have always kind of encouraged, especially clients and, you know, um, my my focus is in relationships <laughs> ironic right um so um that that's what i you know it's one of the things that i specialize in and so if we have somebody who's too codependent or something of that sort i encourage them like go to the movies by yourself go out to eat by yourself go travel by yourself and so um i think it's great to go out yeah. and do a solo trip yeah um I know a lot of people are afraid of doing it, you know, and they're afraid of kind of like being the third wheel and th things like that. And, you know, and, and it's just simply, you would be surprised the number of solo travelers there are even on cruises. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot. So don't feel like you necessarily have to have somebody to do a trip. No. Um, and there are always tours and things that you can do where, you know, if you want to be around people, you know, you go on a tour like this one right here and, you know, we had, uh, I want to say it was five, but my memory's a little fuzzy. Um, I think we had five people. And so, you know, we were all on this little tour together. And so if you feel like, oh my gosh, I've been alone for too long, go on a tour and go with some people and meet some people. And then if you want to hang out with them, you can, you know, they had actually invited me to dinner and I was like, no, I'm good, but thanks. You know, I, so Absolutely. So right. this was one of the other tours. This was the tour behind the fall. And this was actually um, a picture in the elevator. Um, so the guy that was the tour guide talked about like how many gallons of water go over. And um, they had put in this um, basically a dam because the falls were eroding so fast that they were going to um, basically be gone and and not be as magnificent as they were in x amount of years and i suck at this and i should have read over my stuff first to be better at the the facts but um so they put in this um this dam and in the winter they cut it down to less than 50 percent of the water that can go over the falls actually goes over and in the summer it can go up to 85 percent so it's not even ever a hundred percent that's going over the falls so that power that we heard at the beginning was less uh -huh. than 50 percent of the water that actually goes over those falls wow <laughs> It is insane. Um, but you can see like down at the, but down towards the bottom, there's like a little, um, little arrow thing. And right at that arrow, that's actually where the tunnels are 
Um, yep. And so we're back behind that waterfall. And um, it is the, it was, oh, it was, it was cool. I mean, it was really, really cool. Um, so, you know, you're what, 176 miles underground, which was, or under this waterfall, which is kind of cool. Um, wow. It's pretty amazing. And then of course they use that dam for powering um, the falls and, and a lot of Niagara Falls, the city. You know, I always know when I like go to the ocean, how overwhelming it can be, you know, the power behind the ocean, but yeah. I think this is even more powerful, wow. um, you know. Concentrated, you know, yeah. it's, all, it's all right here, you know, it's in this, this one little section, you know. Right, and you were behind it. You yeah. were, un- I mean, you were under, ooh. Yeah. See, that, that has to, that, that might have to go on my sissy bucket list. I don't know, my <laughs> chicken bucket, whatever we called it. Yeah. Even being able, like, you can stand right next to it right at that point, too, and, um, like, on the outside of it, and even that was overwhelming, and just, you know, this whoosh that's behind you, it was really, really, really cool. Right, okay, let's see, now I've got to figure out how to get back out of this, and back to my, there it is, ah. So, um, looking all snazzy, um, this was the Hornblower tour. So this is the, um, the boat ride that goes down into the falls and it takes you right up into it. Um, so you have to wear the cute little dorky ponchos. Um, and I was so glad that I did because it was so cold and there was spray, like not just spray, like there was a shower <laughs> that was coming at you. Um, and it was cold water. Um, so, um, but yeah, this was a really cool thing too. So again, if you're on the U.S. side, it's the Maid of the Mist. And if you're on the Canada side, um, it is the Hornblower. Okay, let's see. Was it after this one? Yeah, I that's think I've got a video. Hang on just one minute. I'm going to have to stop sharing for one second. Corey, you talk about kind of the experience on that while I find your... Um, you know, I, I think one of the things, it was in my head because there are so many movies and you know, TV shows and stuff where they talk about, you know, being on the Maid of the Mist. And so, you know, when I got there, I had looked it up and I was so disappointed because, <laughs> because it, it wasn't there. I couldn't, I couldn't ride it. I had to get on the other one, but the experience was so awesome to, again, I hadn't gone behind the falls yet to be like down in the middle of it. And, um, you know, you have these birds that are flying in the midst and um, you can't hear anything other than this like whoosh going on um it was it was awesome okay i think i found the video here tell me if you can see the screen yep with it on it okay yep here we go the waterfall we're in the middle of the mist it's incredible and cold Yeah. Oh, um, wow. Could you feel, I mean, I'm sitting here and can um, feel that power. But the whole boat vibrated, you know, it's not often that a boat vibrates. <laughs> the right, boat no. vibrating. <laughs> wow. I yeah. mean, that, that definitely was a lot of power. Before I move on, Barbara had commented and said, Barbara's story, she said, now I want to go there too. Yes. And we told her, you know, I know, right. And she said, girls trip. So there you go. There you, go. you may be. <laughs> let us back in. <laughs> yep. Corey will have to take you and show you where the hundred dollar hotel room is. <laughs> there you go. The sweet. The sweet. Uh-huh. The sweet. Okay. Yeah. Let me get back into the share in here. All right. Now we were to this one. Can so, um, yeah. So okay. it's really cool. Um, so on the U.S. side, there are fences all the way around Bridal Falls, which is what's on that side, um, and like all around their observation decks and what have you. On the Canadian side, the fences only go so far and they're only like waist high. And so we had actually asked the driver, like, why aren't there fences next to this water? And he said, because Canadians aren't stupid. (laughs) Oh, 
like, okay. Um, and he was telling us about, you know, how many people actually tried to go over the falls, whether it's for suicidal thoughts or whether it's for, you know, trying to go over in a barrel successfully. Um, and they actually put in just before this spot right here, um, so I'm literally standing right on the edge of the falls at the top, and there is just a fence that is right at my waist, and um, and it's right there. So again, the power was incredible, um, yeah. just overwhelming. I think when you're standing there, and I know when I you know went to the ocean for the first time, and I've not been to Niagara Falls, I definitely would like to go. Um, but I think when you stand there, it makes you kind of realize just how small in the whole scope of things that you are yeah. when you're standing next to something like this. But I also think it shows you that immense power. And, you know, there's people that draw power from the elements and from what's around them, yeah. um, you know, and, and that can feed you know that yeah. kind of feeds the soul so maybe Niagara yeah. Falls was probably the best choice in the world for you at that time yeah um water is my element and um and I it was so powerful that you know when you're already in your fields and you hear a song on the radio that's all in its field and it's powerful you do that like <gasps> kind of gasp and thing like I kept finding myself doing that like I would just gasp at the power and the sound and the flow that you could watch. Um, and I, I've been around a lot of waterfalls. Like I, I have, I mean, Waimea Falls um, in, on Oahu um, is huge, you know? Um, and again, the, the Tahitian waterfalls that we had, but this was, this was so much power kind of concentrated in one little spot that was just right there, you know? Yeah, that's that's what, what I was sitting there thinking, Corey. I mean, you could have went to the water like in the Caribbean or back to Tahiti or to Hawaii, but would it have been that same, you know, it's, it's not saying there's not power and there's not healing there, right. but I swear, I think when you're so much, I don't know, I just think that you couldn't have picked a better place at this point in time. Yeah, it was a it was a good call. It was definitely a good call. Yeah. Thank God for my bucket yeah. list. Yeah. So look at that. Uh, That's definitely a different waterfall than you would see in Tahiti or anywhere yeah. like that. Those nice gentle waterfalls. This one's a okay. little bit different. Yeah. So this is the actual picture of what that screenshot was on the elevator um, with mm -hmm. all the facts on it. This is the actual picture. So like I'm right up next to it. And again, you can see like in that little dark spot, like that's where, you know, I'm going to be behind, you know, in a bit. Um, but yeah, it was just, um, there's like a little observation deck that goes out down on the bottom of Horseshoe Falls. So that basically you're like right on top of the, of the, the, the base of the water, you know, so you have that waterfall just kind of coming down over the top um, and it's deafening. I mean, it's, it's insane. It's beautiful. Yeah, it, it really, really was. Um, so yeah, so the tunnels were really cool. The tunnels were originally built when they did the dams, and it was um, so it was part of their system to kind of push the water off in different sections. Um, and so, like, you go down this elevator, and then you're in these like it feels like you're in like the basement of a hospital. That's kind of what it felt like. Um, mm -hmm. But you come across these little portholes. There were three of them. And this was one of them. And so you were looking at the backside of a waterfall. Um, and so um, they were just, they were really cool. You could like walk right up to the edge and, you know, a lot of the water was coming in and again, that power. And if, if you know, if the concrete had crushed, you know, we all would have been dust. Um, but um, it was, I mean, it's, it's really kind of amazing. It's a cool, like, I can't even imagine building it. And they have like these huge pictures as you're walking through the tunnels, they have these huge pictures of it being built, of the uh -huh. people who were actually building it and what that looked like, what the structure looked like to hold everything in place, um, the facts and the figures and everything, not only about um, Horseshoe Falls itself um, and about Bridal Falls and um, Veil Falls, but they, they talked about like, why they did it and how they did it and how long it took and so like if you're also into like history or if you're into like you know the cool mechanics of you know building awesome stuff like this 
this is the, the this is the tour you want to do. You want to do the tunnel tour. Well, let me ask you a question now. You know, I'm, I, I think you shared this too. As far as the walking goes, a walker, I am not. I'm not. Um, how much walking is involved on this tour? Uh, not enough to complain about. Um, and you know, so I you don't have to do the big hike up anywhere. Or no. Anything. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good deal. No more hikes. No. Um, it's a you walk through basically like um the entrance of you know like you would for any attraction. Um, uh -huh. And then um, you go down like four stairs and then you get in an elevator. Um, you do the little turnstiles, you get in an elevator. It takes you down to where you're supposed to go. And then you can go one way and go out onto that platform where you can see everything from the outside uh -huh. or you go down the other hallway. Um, and that's where you have these little ports. And, and it's, I mean, I don't, I don't do distance cause that's math, but yeah. I wasn't complaining. I may not have been in my right mind, but that probably would have made me complain more and my knee right. was killing me. Um, so, um, you know, I, so I, it's doable. This might be okay for somebody even with some limited mobility issues. You're in a wheelchair. You can do it. Okay. There you go. Good yeah. deal. Good to know. Yep. Um, so danger, you think? <laughs> yeah. So on there uh, and you can see like how high their fences were like they did they're getting they're just not that tough but so this is their only warning so you know I, I guess if you if you go over it's it's your own fault <laughs> yeah i'm sitting I here thought, looking at that um, I thought it was a funny sign <laughs> i mean you know they might put the fences up but it does not look like they are very high no i think it was more for decoration than anything else yeah yeah okay Oh, look. Yeah, so, you know, this is proof that you can fake a smile anytime. Um, <laughs> you know, you can look like you're having a dandy time where you are. And it's proof that if somebody doesn't want you to see it, you won't, you know? Um, yeah. So again, you know, when if, if there's somebody in your world uh, <laughs> that, you know, says to you, how did you not know? Well, because sometimes we present like this. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I think we need to go back and talk about, you know, one of the, I don't know that I want to say it's necessarily a myth, but I think we've all kind of heard, you know, if somebody talks about suicide or lets you know that that's what they're thinking about, then that really means they don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think we need to kind of stomp that and just say that's not always the case. Correct. Um, Nor is it you know, that if you ask somebody, hey, are you thinking about killing yourself? That's not putting a thought in their head. They're not going to match and go, oh, God, I never thought of that. I should go do that. Um, right. I think a lot of people are wigged out about being able to talk about <laughs> suicide and it needs to be normalized. Um, mm -hmm. not the act itself, but the ability to talk about it so that you can help get somebody through it or so that they can get themselves through it, you know? Right. And I don't think you have to beat around the bush to ask somebody that. No. I mean, I uh -huh. think it's okay to say, Corey, are you thinking about killing yourself? Or yeah. Corey, do you want to end your life? Yeah. Or Corey, you know, are you thinking about suicide? I mean, you know how, you know, kind of people are afraid and I think they want to beat around the bush and, yeah. and you know, why? Yeah. Why? And, and I can tell you, um, you know, I, there were, you know, there were a handful of people, um, you know, a, a group of people that I worked with. And then again, you know, my, my besties, um, I mean, they knew, and uh, I mean, just about all of them said, you're going to go there and you're going to kill yourself, aren't you? And yep. And, and I said, it with a smile on my face and I joked yeah. about, it. um, but I, you know, it's, it's not like they didn't ask. And, and I think that, um, you know, in, in the health profession, we get a little better at being able to ask. Um, but again, that doesn't always mean that you're going to be able to penetrate and be as helpful as you want to be in that moment. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think that the first step is definitely initiating conversations. Absolutely. You know, I mean, um, you, if you don't ask that question, then, you know, how, how are you even at that point you are speculating, 
you know, and, and at that point, sometimes that's all it takes to open up that conversation, you know, is, is just not, and you can't always expect somebody's going to give you the, the absolute truth in that either. Yeah. You know, I mean, but even mental health, even people that are not in the mental health field need to get comfortable in saying that, I think, because, you know, one every 40 seconds. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. You know, that is a lot. So. Absolutely. All right. Look at this one. So. I um, love the hat. So after I fell on my face, um, the place that I was trying to make it on time was the zip line. And um, so this was a zip line and it went over um, across the water into the falls. Um, and so, I mean, it was a pretty stellar view. Um, but yes, my, my very, again, very stylish hat and my oh so sexy picture. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's look at this one now. Okay. I'm just going to say again, I'm a chicken. Um, you know, it would be really super hard for me to say, oh, yes. I'm, I mean, in theory, I would love to say I'm going to do something like this. You yeah. Know, but I'm a, I'm a weenie. I mean, I really am. Um, it was worth it. Um, it wasn't that expensive. Um, I want to say it was like 30 bucks. Um, and I mean, you don't have to do anything. You just hold on you know, or yeah. not, they'll take a picture. Um, but there are two, three tracks. They only had two running, but there are three tracks and like they, they go from this high platform and they head straight towards that fall. Um, wow. and just go right over the water. I mean, it was, it was pretty intense because the spray, I mean, the, the spray is amazing. Like, I mean, it just goes up so high and it crystallizes when it's cold out. So basically oh. you're you're getting hit with ice cubes. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah. That is too funny. Now, my you know, had I mean, a lot of ice cubes on it. <laughs> my daughter is actually, you know, she does the zip line nail at Anakista in Gatlinburg. Yeah. yeah. And it scares me to death what she's doing because, you know, she sent some pictures, but she also sent video of her hanging upside down and doing all this <laughs> other crazy stuff. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, this is just, it has to be a spectacular view. It really I is. mean, it was, it's, it was a, I mean, I don't know where else you can, I mean, you can do zip lines all over the place that are pretty flipping amazing, you know, and do the treetops in various places, but, you know, to, to do it over the falls, which is such an iconic place. Um, it's, it's literally, you know, one of the wonders, um, like this is the place to do it. If you're going to do it, if you're, if you're going to, if you're going to have big girl panties on, this is the place to do it, do it at one of the seven wonders. <laughs> now, um, Rebecca Williams said very much. So does it need to be talked about? talking about suicide so you know yeah. and, and you know like I said and I mentioned earlier this is suicide prevention month and Corey coming on with her story couldn't have came at a better time you know and there was no plan to that whenever you know Corey had had said hey I did Niagara Falls would you like me to come talk about it and absolutely and you know I'm just now hearing Corey's story so you know um, but zip lining, and I think the next thing is an adventure as well. Look at that. Yep. So, um, I mean, I went all out for this trip. I did all the things for me, um, because I figured that was part of if, if I'm going to heal and, and actually the, the helicopter trip was after not going over um and so i was like okay so let's literally raise ourselves up and look down on this little tiny problem <laughs> um yeah. putting things and it was it was kind of my way to put things in perspective um the helicopter ride was great it was about 10 minutes so it was relatively short um but and there were one two three four other people in there with me um plus the pilot and um but I wasn't listening to them. Um, overhead, you hear all the things that are going on about the falls and they show you not just the falls, but they also kind of take you around like 
there's a whole water filtration system and there's like a little dam area and there's, you know, all these little pockets of other things. So it's kind of cool to actually learn about some of the power um, and, and electricity things that are going on for the Niagara Falls city. Right, yeah. right. So it was, this- it was pretty awesome. Do what? It was pretty awesome. Yeah, so this, but this was a turning point for you. You had, at this point, had you, you had kind of made your decision yeah. at this point that- I had walked away from the backside of the, of the waterfall and kind of taken a breath and just said, okay, well, let's see, let's just see. And yeah. um, kind of, you know, I, I, I wasn't sure yet what all I was going to do or what the year in front of me was going to look like, um, but- but yeah, you know, I, I kind of went, okay, let's go up instead of down. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Let's see. A lot of symbolism. So this yes. just kind of shows, um, you know, what, you know, this is kind of that breakdown, the water in between. There's a bridge that you can go across. Um, you have to have your passport on you. And in the middle point, you can stand in two different countries. You can have your foot on the U.S. side and your foot on the Canadian side. Um, and you can see over on the U.S. side, that's Bridal Falls. And so that's what you see if you're over on the observation deck in New York. Um, if you're on the Canadian side, um, up in the corner, you know, on, on this side up here, um, that's going to be where Horseshoe Falls is. So. Wow, look at that. I tell you. And I'm sure this was not taken, you said, from the helica helicopter. This was actually taken from where you, the restaurant, the restaurant in the needle lock thing, right? Yeah, that's actually where that was. Wow, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Heck of a view. But look at the big difference. It kind of looks like so much of a difference between the U.S. and the Canada side. Look, over here, it looks more, that's definitely city, city over there. And I know this is over here, but look at the difference. Yeah, trees and foliage and yeah. It was, oh, Canada, Canada was, be, I mean, it really, I, I only went through the city of Niagara Falls. Like I didn't stray out of the city, um, but um, it was beautiful and the people really were nice. Like, you know, um, so the stereotype is correct. Um, like it was, it was, it was really, it was really beautiful. Would Canada yeah. be somewhere you would want to visit again? Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, this Canada's huge, you know, and uh -huh. so I was on one little tip of Canada. I actually want to go to the opposite side um, where my girlfriend uh -huh. Sandy is that I met while I was in Tahiti. I would love awesome. to go over on that side. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So this is from the helicopter. And so this shows you, um, you know, Horseshoe Falls. Um, and then veil falls and then bridal is uh is out of the picture but i mean this is it's just it's massive you know it's massive down at the lower lower part of the screen is that that restaurant yes that's what i thought i thought so that's that explains why you got that awesome picture from the restaurant so yes. and so your ho was your hotel somewhere near this so the the other pointy part that you see um yep Right that's, here. That's where my room was. Okay. Except awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Let's see what we got. I love this picture, Corey. I love, love, beautiful? love this picture. That it is looks, beautiful. It looks like silk or satin. Like it's beautiful. It really does. That would be awesome to have framed, you know? Yeah. Um, the thing that was that was so amazing to me, like, so I mentioned Waimea Falls in in Oahu it's it's very, it's a long drop like it's a it's a huge huge long drop um I don't remember how many stories but you know this this was it's a little short and stubby like it's a short and stubby waterfall uh -huh. and I think that's what's so incredible to me is that it's short and stubby but it has so much power because there's just so much flowing over that um you know it it sounds so much stronger than those really, really big, tall waterfalls do. It's kind right. of No, I think you had actually sent me another video right here. So give me just one second. I'm going to stop sharing and find the video I think that you had sent here. I'm curious what it was. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I'm pretty sure. Just one second because I don't think you're going to be able to see that. Oh, it's the helicopter. Hang on. Oh, 
Come on over. Come fly with me. <laughs> okay, let me start it over. Can you see it? Yeah. I love the elevator music. That was beautiful. Yeah, it really is. And the the little voice that you hear is, you know, they're telling you about the falls every once in a while. And then you hear the elevator music again. And then you hear, you know, so it was really, it was really neat. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Can you see the picture again now up there? Yep. Hey, I'm getting good at this Zoom thing. Look at that. <laughs> so, um, again, this was the first night. One of the things that they did every single night was they lit up the falls and of this this was I don't know why it was so amazing to me but I love water I love color you put the two together and I was such a happy camper and then of course it was you know a, it was rainbow so you know we have a pride waterfall going on how awesome right. um so um it was freezing it was so cold um but it was just beautiful it was absolutely beautiful so they light up the falls um every night and um in the summertime what they do is you can actually pay and you can go up and you can do your own color scheme like they'll let you do the colors on the waterfall like they'll give you so many minutes where you can play on the projector and you can pick what you want it to look like oh wow really yeah, yeah. so if you're there okay. in the summer months that's something to do too now I'm sitting here looking at how cold you do look. How cold was it? Now we're talking November, the end of November. Um, I, it was, I think that first night it was 30 something degrees. Um, and, uh, and it got colder when I left, it was snowing, um, quite a bit. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a little chilly. Um, yeah, and you're 30 cold. some. Yeah, you're 30 some degrees, but you're next to all this water too. Yeah. I mean, so, you know. And it doesn't, you can't tell, but I have on um, leggings underneath my jeans and I'm wearing Uggs. And then I have on, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, oh, like thermals underneath a sweater, underneath a leather jacket. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you're definitely bundled. And I will say, yay, Canada, for turning the falls rainbow. Right? So pretty. I mean, it, you know, that it's about the unity, too, guys. It really is, you know, and, and the, we're all, we're all human beings, you yeah. know, and, and my happiness does not affect your happiness, you know, and, and it should not. And I don't go political and I do not, but yay, Canada. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. So look at yeah. this. Oh um, my gosh. I love, this was my favorite color scheme. Um, I, I love purple, but I'm a pink girl. Um, you know, I, I keep that on the down low a lot, but I just thought it was beautiful. And I loved how the fall, like the the mist um just looked, it looked like cotton candy. Like, I mean, it was just it does. It, it, it's silly, but That's, it, gosh, it's, it's so just pretty beautiful. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was unlike anything, honestly, that I had ever seen before. And um, I think that's one of the lures of Niagara Falls. I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, so many honeymooners go and, you know, all of these things. It's, it's just, it is amazing. And it is unlike anything else that you see. And then again, when you get into the history, when you get into the, the amount of gallons and blah, 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 all the things that, you know, are the facts about it. Like it's it's kind of overwhelming and no wonder it's a national uh, uh, um, one of the seven wonders like it's because it's it's ridiculous like it is an amazing spot right one of the seven wonders of the world it's easy to access you know yeah. it's not always easy to access those but this one is one that's very easy to access yeah, it is. Um, passport and you're good to go I mean, point. well, and then, you know, I mean, if you go to the New York side, which, you know, yeah, you don't even need a passport. 
yeah, yeah, you're you're right here. So and it's relatively, you know, it's easy to get to. But that sure. is beautiful. I'm sitting here wondering, do they light it up, Corey, with projectors? Is that what you say? Yeah. So um up above, um, and I it may have shown it um in that needle picture. There was uh -huh. this giant, it looks about the size of a billboard. Uh -huh. And it's just a bunch of individual crazy halogen spotlights. Um, and actually the tour guide guy talked about like how many Watts those put off and stuff, but, um, and then there's a control board elsewhere and they just kind of type in the controls of what they want the, the board to light up and look like. So yeah, it projects onto that. Um, and they do that every night. Um, it's, it's really, 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 really cool. So they change it probably very often. So the people that live there get this own show. I mean, they get a special oh. show all the time. They, I mean, they change the colors every like three minutes, like yeah. <laughs> it's constantly changing. That's beautiful. It was really cool. Um, That's... I would absolutely recommend. Um, so this is you can. I'm looking at the U.S. side, and I just thought it was yeah. Really cool. Um, but I would, I would recommend going in the winter. Um, because there are fewer people, plain and simple. So because it is a hot spot, because it is one of those tourist traps. Um, you want to go on the off season. You still get to do all the things. You still get to see everything. Um, just bring warmer clothes. And, um, and that way you can, you don't have to fight with other people and you don't have to be in crowds and it is much more, um, intimate really. I mean, even, you know, the tunnels they had talked about in the, in the summertime, you know, there are these huge lines and, you know, you can wait up to how many hours and, you know, and you're in there with so many people at a time we I think there were like 12 people that were under there total with me for the hour that I was under there um wow. so I mean it, it was it's it's I I recommend a, a winter trip um yeah and, uh, you know just kind of being able to enjoy it at your own pace yeah and I think it's much more affordable too based on what I'm hearing Probably. you know I Probably. mean, so a hundred dollars for that nice room. I mean, I want that big tub. Is all I got to say. Yeah. Come on. Right. It was pretty amazing. It was it not was. so great with my knee ripped open. That part no. sucked. <laughs> no, but at least you didn't have to squeeze into one of those little tea tiny hotel bathtubs to try to soak your knee either. You yeah, know? no, I wasn't about to do that. Uh, hotel yeah, no. big bathtubs. It's one of my one of my things. So yeah oh goodness I think we're back to the end of it but you know I mean I think it sounds like Niagara Falls is hopefully going to always have a special place in your heart Corey it was a jump start for me ah, no pun intended um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a jump start for me um I you know when you're a therapist, you know, you have people who say, you know, oh, I wish I had it as together as you do. Pfft, honey, we don't always have it together. Um, we do often have better support systems um, and we do often have better skill, but we don't always use them either. And for me, what happened was when I came back from this trip, my skills kicked in. And, um, you know, and I did all the things, you know, I, I went to therapy and I, um, you know, I, I talked to various people and I got a tattoo and I learned how to ride a motorcycle and I, you know, took a trip home. And I, I mean, I, you know, I did all of these things that were these healing moments for me so that I could work on me. Um, so, you know, it, it was that moment where, you know, if I step back, what is, what are things going to look like in a year? And it's really interesting that we're doing this now, um, because, um, it was about three weeks ago when I was finally able to really kind of go, you know what, I think I'm going to be okay. Um, I mean, so 11 months later, I was, you know, really kind of still struggle or 10 months later, I was really still kind of in my head with, I'm still not okay. I'm, I'm still a little broken. Um, and about three weeks ago, um, I, I had some, I had some of my own closure and, um, with all of the things that I did with all of the skills that I put in place with all of the actions that I took, all those action steps, 
with all the behaviors that I changed, with the um, interactions that I've had with others along the way, um, with the healing that I've done, with all of that, um, you know, there is a, you come out on the other side. And logically, I think we always know that, but emotionally, it's really hard to see. And um, I, I don't know what clicked for me when I was standing behind those falls, but there was that moment where I, where my, where my emotional side and my logical side talked to one another and let me walk away and, um, you know, and come out on the other side. So um, it is doable. And, uh, you know, and again, you know, most of us have, have at least had a thought that's crossed through our head or we know somebody else who have. And so, you know, this is not a foreign concept for people. You know, the idea of suicide, I think that a lot of people don't talk about it but it's not foreign and um whatever it takes to get you through whatever it takes um to encourage somebody else they may not emotionally hear you in that moment but logically they will yeah now Corey, what would be the biggest piece of advice that you can give somebody that might be you know contemplating um you know having having kind of been there what would you say to them um I mean, right now, if someone was there and somebody was listening. Um, to kind of sit with both sides of yourself, you know, at any given time, we have that little angel and that little devil. We've got the logical side and the rational side, and we've got the emotional, irrational side. Um, and when you are deep in your darkness, logic isn't winning. Um, emotion is winning. And you feel like you're crawling through peanut butter and it's hard to breathe. It's hard to move. Um, it's hard to think past the minute that you're in. Um, but to stop and to let yourself sit in that for a second and be not okay. But then to say, okay, but what's the other side of this? And then to maybe just let some of those things that you already know, let that logical side talk to you and say to yourself, it's not going to be like this forever. That, you know, permanent solution for, you know, a, a an, an impermanent problem. And um, I, everything changes, you know, the, the only thing that we know is going to happen is change. And mm -hmm. so what's going on for you today is not going to be going on for you forever, um, good, bad, or otherwise. And so we've got to be able to believe that in those dark, dark moments, you're allowed to sit there, you're allowed to have a pity party, but don't unpack and live there. Right. Now, what advice would you give to somebody that might think that someone they love is thinking about it? Call them out on it. Um, your behaviors are off. I'm worried about you. Um, are you thinking about killing yourself? Do you have a plan? Do you have means? Um, is there anything that I can do? They're probably going to tell you no. Um, let them know that you're there for them. Don't minimize it. You know, oh, you're just attention seat. Don't do that. Um, you know, take it seriously. Give them all the support, but also give them some space. Um, you, you don't want to put somebody in a corner. Um, when you corner something, it, you know, we, we tend to kind of lash out and we make some, we make some, you know, impulse, um, uh, moves. So let everybody, you know, let that person know that you're there for them. Let that person know that you, um, you know, you're trying to empathize with them or that you do understand, you know, how dark this place is. And then remind them like, it won't be like this tomorrow. You've, you know, you, you've been in dark places before and sadly you're going to be in a dark place again, probably, but you're going to come through this bottom line. All of us, we have all come through 100% of our crappy days and our horrible moments. Absolutely. You know, and that's one thing I always try to, to keep in my mind but I also, like I said, you know, having a son that struggles with this, I always try to remind him of that, yeah. you know, there is um, the, yeah, and the number that has been sitting up here on the screen right now is the Suicide Prevention Lifeline, yeah. write this number down, 
share this, share the video. Corey's story is pretty powerful. Um, you know, and, and it's not just about the travel side of it, guys. Yes, I am a travel agent, but I've been a mental health professional too, but I've also been there, you know, and, and Corey is still in that mental health field, Yep. you know, yep. and, and, you know, it's really important to get this word out. There's also suicidepreventionlifeline.org the website um you know definitely keep this number share it don't be afraid to talk about suicide don't be afraid to ask somebody you know and if you are feeling that way don't be afraid to reach out there's help out there absolutely so. um and i you know i think the biggest thing you know say all the things that you want to say to that person or even to yourself um it may you may think it's falling on deaf ears that person hears it it's going in that logic bank um, their emotional side's just not hearing it yet. And, you know, if it's, if it's there, then they can access it. So don't be afraid to say all the things, don't be afraid to say, I'm here for you, you know, or you're going to get through this or whatever that really truly is a logical answer. Um, you know, and, and whatever the reason is, as I say, you know, I, I, I often look back or, you know, and, and say, oh my God, I'm a 16 year old girl. This was about a breakup, but you know, it was more than that in, in for me. And so whatever the person's reason is that you can't question their reasons. You just have to, you know, let them know that that reason is, is not going to be the same in a year. Can't question, but also don't minimize their reason. You know, I mean, because what might seem like a small problem for one person, you know, is completely, a, it's different for everybody. Yeah. It may not be so trivial for them. Right. And there could be a lot of underlying factors too. You know, we yeah. do um, not. Yeah, we don't know everybody's everything. You know, we don't know all the factors. Yep. We yeah. Yeah. That's what I just started to say. Don't ever look at someone and assume to know their life or their story. We all have stories. We all have past. We all have, you know, our issues, you know. So don't ever look at somebody and just say, well, that person has got everything together. There's no way in the world they could do this. And then right. look at somebody else and say, this person's a complete mess. You know, they're going to be the ones that will get us in trouble, you yeah. know, and, and that that can cost people lives. So Corey, thank you so very much. I'm of going course. to stop sharing right now and take it back to where we're both there. Thank you so much for coming on tonight and for sharing Thanks Niagara Falls me. with us. Yeah. But not just for doing Niagara Falls, for doing your story, because that was that's pretty brave to get in here, especially coming from the mental health field. And I know, you know, you're proof positive that this can be with anybody i mean this is not just you know oh, yeah. you're you're Nobody's a trained here. therapist yeah you know but you know even therapists need somebody to talk to and even therapists need you know the the self-care that we need and also the professional care the professional care that it's it's okay to reach out for help don't be embarrassed to reach out for help yeah. um you know, and I think a lot of times mental health issues get a lot of stigma that they don't need to get, you know, I mean, we all, you know, I know when I was, when I was working on my master's degree and, you know, you're doing your disorders and the psychological disorder, I, I was diagnosing myself left and right. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> and everybody I knew was getting some kind of a diagnosis. So Absolutely. Yes. I think we yeah. definitely all, but I'm waiting to hear about your next trip. You got to let me know what, what you, else you got, you know, in your future or in your you past. Know, that, when, when COVID lifts. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's okay. I need people on cruise talk Tuesday. You're going to come share some of your cruises too. That'd Absolutely. be awesome. Been lots of cruises. Um, I've gone lots of places. Um, I, I mean, I, I've been really lucky. Um, I do have currently, um, there's a, a cruise that is, is, kind of floating, but not yet booked, you know, from the one that got canceled. Um, we have a Vegas trip coming up next July. Um, I, uh, I booked a suite for my girlfriend's 30th birthday. Um, and, uh, she's never been to Vegas. So we'll, I'll, I'll introduce her to that as well. Um, and then, um, I actually, um, my best friend just, uh, purchased a, um, uh, penthouse suite, um, at the beach because oh, wow. she felt bad that I haven't been able to travel all summer what beach? all year. What beach you so, going to? Um, it's Myrtle. 
um okay. but she uh she dropped a hefty sum she just keeps saying it's my credit card it's fine um and uh said you know this is because you know all of your trips have been canceled and you need to get out and be by the water so um that is you know, awesome travel is self-care <laughs> yes it is it, it definitely is and COVID has affected us all a lot this year um, but, you know, crossing my fingers for December, I've got a princess cruise to schedule sometime next year. I'm working on a canard yeah. training right now. So there will be another graduation cruise coming up in my future. Nice. Um, so, and Steve is still wanting to do the Roatan all-inclusive trip. So I've got to get that booked. Um, but love travel, but thank you for giving us an opportunity to combine travel with you know, with mental health tonight and with, with suicide Absolutely. prevention. Thank you. So, all right, guys. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Corey. Um, and we will talk soon. Everybody have a good night. Good Bye. night. Bye.